Dave Parody here with another slide makeover video podcast based on the ideas in my book, The Visual Slide Revolution. Today we're going to talk about presenting detailed data and one of the challenges with detailed data is that it can be overwhelming and the example I'm using today is this slide. Now this comes from the European Central Bank and they have put together a series of slides for teachers and presenters to use to explain certain aspects of their bank and this is one of those slides. Uh, what it is is it's detailed data about how the different uh, national central banks um, subscribe to the overall capital of the European Central Bank. This is a representative slide because many times we get a lot of detailed data that's done in an analysis, maybe out of Excel or some other uh, specialized analysis package, and it's a whole lot of detailed information. You can say they even take these down to four decimal places, very detailed. The challenge is, let's say I was a teacher and I wanted to use this, how do I use this slide and make it easy to understand? Well, the first thing I've got to do is to figure out what am I trying to explain with this slide? So I think the major point that you want to explain here is the uh, difference or the proportion of the overall subscription that is done from Euro area national central banks versus non-euro area national central banks and then maybe look at one of those areas in more detail to see which countries have the greatest influence. So if that's what I'm the point I'm trying to make here's how I would redo this slide. Now when we look at the uh, proportion of the central bank subscription that is done by euro area national central banks you can see it's almost 70 percent so a large majority and the non-euro areas is only just over 30 percent. Now let's take a look at the Euro area national central banks and see which ones are the most uh, most important or, or the ones that have the greatest proportion. So when we look at the largest ones, the largest one is Germany, over a quarter of uh, the overall subscription uh, in that category. Then we have France, Italy, Spain. So those four, are, you can see, make up more than 75% of the Euro area and CB subscriptions. Then we have a couple of uh, other ones, Netherlands and Belgium, and then all the rest are less than 3% of the overall. And so that is all the rest of them, Greece, Austria, Portugal, Finland, Ireland, Slovakia, Slovenia, Luxembourg, Cyprus, and Malta. So you see, what I did here is I layered the data. I started with an overall view saying here are the two proportions, and then I took one of those proportions and broke that down to take a look at the major players in that area. And those are really some of the key things we want to think about when we're given all this detailed data, very uh, broken down uh, detailed data, we need to make it understandable for the audience. They need to be able to see it in context and figure out what it means because the original slide would be very hard to figure out with all the detailed data there. So before we get to the lessons for today, if you want more information on the book, go to visualsliderevolution.com more information about my workshops, consulting, videos, other resources, go to thinkoutsidetheslide.com. So our lessons for layering the discussion of detailed data. First of all, determine what the key point is. Remember that detailed slide, I had to first figure out as a presenter, as a teacher, what do I want to say about this data? What is the point I want the audience to understand? Simply throwing data up and hoping that the audience figures it out is not going to work. It, they're just not going to figure it out. You need to determine as the presenter what the key point or key points are going to be. Then start at the highest level. So give them a broad context first, maybe only a couple different categories so that they understand how the hierarchy of the data works. Then within that hierarchy that you've set, then present the detailed data. So always present it in the perspective, in that hierarchy that you've already established with them from the start, because otherwise it's too confusing for them to try to reorient themselves uh, mentally. And if you can, try to use visuals that are consistent with each other. So you notice I used the pie chart here that was consistent. I started with the pie chart for the whole overall perspective and then broke it down in a pie chart. It just makes it easier for people to start understanding it because again it's it's one less thing that's changing as they move down in the hierarchy. So it's not that you can't present detailed data easily. Uh, you can do it so that it's easy to understand for your audience if you layer it using the ideas that we've prevented, pre presented in this slide makeover. This has been Dave Parody with another PowerPoint slide makeover video podcast.